Embracing a strange to illusion is fray. It's also the last of this 8x8 canvas paper pad, so if you care, consider subscribing to see the upcoming video review. If I remember correctly, which I hardly do, I developed this concept when I was upset, but I don't recall why. It turned out very, oh, the place which will go, meets Starry Night, meets Salvador Dali's surrealism sort of distortion. But my feelings were anything but a dream. <laughs> Tell me if you see those elements, too. Heavily distorted, the figure is down on its hand, knee, foot, and shoulder, convulsing and or becoming undone. With its back arching, the figure is grappling to get its bearings, as one determined leg forces its way through the gaping torso, forcing the body onward. Gathering its head thoughtfully in one hand, the figure teeters on its dislocated arm for more balance. Each limb seems to have a will of its own. I'm curious how this makes anyone else feel, because despite the angst of it, I feel this is actually one of my most positive visuals. To me, it's very hopeful, optimistic, and grounded. This, to me, says resilience. While I was painting this, the song Beauty Remains came to mind by Paloma Faith. Specifically, the verses um, the angels must have sent you because they heard me crying, waiting so long for this time to arrive. And so I make a dress for my sorrows and shoes for my sadness and dance all the way to love. I believe it's trauma, but on Spotify it says trouble. But I think she says trauma. So it's trauma passes and beauty remains. And though I know this could turn tragic, it's all right. It's all right because I'm willing to take the pain if it's from you. Um, there's also a line about pouring dreams into something. And I feel like this painting also conveys that. So that's the only song that came to mind, and it's just like over and over. It's, I don't know, but this song's very hopeful, but it's also very sad. It's like, I'm defeated, but I'm not down, and I think that is something I feel often. <laughs> and although this is beautiful, it, a beautiful mess, I think it puts the viscera and visceral, albeit very rainbow, care bear, that sort of gentleness, which isn't that what viscera is. I think it's often thought of as like a very morbid sort of brutal thing, at least with like the connotations of like the popular depictions of it. And with this, I think it elevates that sort of angst to something diaphanous and ethereal. Just my take, and I'm very biased. <laughs> So ignore me if you want. Maybe it's because I've been immersed in fairy stories. I recently began to wonder what my fairy magic senses would be, at least in the mortal realm. In some cases, magic can have like earthly associations and elements, along with texture associated with like the fae's origin, you know, what realm it belongs to. And I've always loved velvet and vanilla in part to its like, very mild as scents go, and I, I actually have a very strong aversion to most smells. Like, I intentionally try not to smell things sometimes. That includes people. Like, if people walk past me, I hold my breath. I don't like the smell of other people. And I've smelled some people in the wind before, and I'm like, this is what it was like, you know, before, like, the development of metropolises. Like, you know, someone was just walking, and, like, I smell somebody. I was like, it was a man. But, um, <laughs> going off. So I think the aura of my magic, or as a fairy, would be, and that's heavy emphasis on if, because in the Invisible Library, I related to the dragons, but based on the strict codes of, like, conduct, I think I'm much more inclined to be a fairy. At least, I could successfully be a fairy. I would be a terrible dragon. Pair this painting with the scent vanilla and the feel of velvet to really embrace the strange if you want, and if you didn't mind me explaining my art, because I know some people feel a way about that. So, if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on, so I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.